Hello viewers my name is Dr Rajiv welcome to my education channel YouTube Surgery and Orthopedic Education Today's discussion is on tumor like lesions of bone the link of the previous first second and third parts of the lecture series on bone tumors has been given in the description box in the end Please subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you find the discussion useful. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon below to get my videos regularly. The bone tumors are classified according to the tissue of origin or the matrix they produce. The rest are grouped by clinical pathologic features. The majority of benign and malignant primary bone tumors are cartilaginous, means they produce cartilage. Most primary bone tumors are benign. Metastatic tumors are more common than primary tumors. Simple bone cyst is also known as unicameral bone cyst. This is the only true cyst of the bone. The cyst cavity is lined by a fibrous membrane, usually less than 1 mm thick, composed of fibroblast. Males are more frequently affected and most cases occur in the proximal long bones of children and adolescents that is in first two decades of life. Proximal humerus, proximal femur or proximal tibia are commonly affected. In adults it is more common in the ilium and calcaneus. UBC usually occurs in the metaphyseal areas close to the physis but does not cross the physis. Proximal humerus is the commonest site. Its etiology is unknown. UBC is a membrane lined cavity within a bone filled with serous or serous sanguineous straw colored fluid. The cortex may thin out and may lead to a fracture. Symptoms are mainly due to a pathological fracture sustained after a trivial trauma. MRI demonstrates a homogeneous fluid filled cavity. On plain radiographs, it is seen as a well outlined, lytic, centrally located, expansile, metaphyseal lesion with thinned out cortices. Occasionally, when fractures occur, a thin small fragment may fall within the cavity and gives the fallen leaf sign or fallen fragment sign. This sign is pathognomonic of a simple bone cyst with a fracture. Following fracture, there is callus and new bone formation leading to a spontaneous healing. A simple bone cyst needs to be differentiated from a neurismal bone cyst and other causes of a solitary cystic lesion in a bone. Unicameral bone cysts are said to be active when they lie within 1 cm of the epiphyseal plate and latent when they are closer to the diaphysis. A small lesions usually heal spontaneously at skeletal maturity. Larger lesions with risk of pathological fracture, symptomatic lesions and lesions in the lower extremities are treated with curettage with or without bone grafting or internal fixation or aspiration followed by filling with corticosteroid injection, bone marrow aspirate or demineralized bone matrix. Please watch our previous video, Bone Tumors Part 3. The link has been given in the description box. Non ossifying fibroma is a benign fibrogenic lesion of bone. It is also known by various names like metaphyseal fibrous defect, fibrous cortical defect, and fibrogenthoma. Patients typically present between 5 and 20 years of age. Lesions are discovered incidentally on radiographs. The vast majority 
arise eccentrically in the metaphysis of the distal femur and proximal tibia. On radiographs, these are a small, sharply demarcated radiolucent areas surrounded by a thin rim of sclerosis. Histologically, the lesion is characterized by a storiform pattern of spindle cells, giant cells, and foam cells. Most non ossifying fibromas are asymptomatic and resolve spontaneously in adulthood. Most pathologic fractures can be treated non operatively. Fibrous dysplasia is a benign developmental anomaly of bone formation. It is so named because in it the normal bone and marrow are replaced by fibrous tissue and a small woven spicules of bone. A mass of fibrous tissue forms and grows inside the bone. A thin layer of subperiosteal bone forms around the mass and so the lesion appears expanded with ground glass appearance on plane radiograph. Fibrous dysplasia can originate in the epiphysis, metaphysis or diaphysis. There is bowing and cortical thinning of the affected bone. The Schaeffer's crook deformity is the characteristic deformity of fibrous dysplasia of proximal femur. There are four clinical patterns of fibrous dysplasia. One is monoostotic when only one bone is affected. Second is polyostotic when multiple bones are affected. The third is mccune albright syndrome where polyostotic fibrous dysplasia is associated with endocrine and skin changes. And the fourth and the rarest is maja bowd syndrome with fibrous polyostotic dysplasia and associated intramuscular myxomas. The bone commonly affected are the proximal femur and tibia and ribs. The disease commonly occurs in children and adolescents. Fibrous dysplasia is caused by a mutation in the GNAS1 gene located on chromosome 20. Common presenting features are pain, deformity and pathological fracture. The characteristic radiographic appearance is a lucent area with a granular ground glass appearance and a well-defined thinned out sclerotic rim. The characteristic histopathological appearance is that of woven bone spicules with a fibrous stroma. On radiograph, the lesion is usually multiloculated with ground glass appearance and expansion of the cortex of the bone. Serum alkaline phosphatase is often raised. Diagnosis is confirmed by needle biopsy. Active treatment is not required so long as the condition is asymptomatic and is an incidental finding. Surgical treatment with curettage and bone grafting with or without intramedullary fixation is indicated when there is significant deformity or impending pathological fracture or acute pathological fracture and significant pain. Osteofibrous dysplasia or ossifying fibroma of long bones or Campanase disease is a rare lesion that usually affects the tibia and fibula in the first two decades of life. The condition is usually asymptomatic unless pathologic fracture has occurred. Most lesions regress spontaneously after childhood. Hemangiomas are benign tumors of angiomatous origin. They commonly affect the vertebrae and the skull. Most common sufferers are young adults, usually asymptomatic but may present with persistent pain and signs of cord compression. They are usually discovered as incidental findings. One of the lumbar vertebrae is typically affected. Radiologically, the affected vertebral body has thickened and vertically oriented trabeculae. This gives classic jailhouse appearance on plain x-ray and a polka dot pattern on CT films. This tumor should be differentiated from commoner diseases like POTS spine and metastatic bone disease of the spine. Treatment for symptomatic disease is radiotherapy. Eosinophilic granuloma or Langerhans cell histiocytosis is a rare benign Langerhans cell neoplasm. Langerhans cells are antigen presenting cells derived from dendritic cells. It was previously called histiocytosis X 
because of its unknown etiology. There are three types of this lesion, unifocal, multifocal and disseminated. The multifocal disease is called Hans-Suller Christian disease and disseminated disease is known as lateral CV disease. The disease may affect any organ system in the body. The unifocal disease or eosinophily granuloma mainly affects the axial skeleton that is the skull, spine, ribs, pelvis and diaphysis of long bones. Single or multiple lesion may be present. Eosinophily granuloma primarily affects children and adolescents that is those 5 to 20 years old. Symptoms of eosinophily granuloma include a stiffness, local pain and sometimes pathological fracture. In the spine, there is collapse of vertebra known as vertebra plana. Diagnostic workup of eosinophily granuloma includes X-ray, CT scan, MRI and guided biopsy. Hans-Suller Christian disease classically presents with clinical triad of skull lesions, exophthalmos and diabetes insipidus. Literal severe disease occurs before 3 years of age. It is characterized by fever, lymphadenopathy, petrosplenomegaly and multiple bone lesions. Literal severe disease is frequently and rapidly fatal. The eosinophily granuloma of bone is the disease of interest for orthopedic surgeons. Simple bony lesions resolve spontaneously over months to years. The biopsy itself may initiate the healing process. Other treatment options are corticosteroid injections, radiotherapy and curettage with or without bone grafting. Intravenous zolendronic acid has been used successfully to help resolve pain in symptomatic cases. Bony spread of metastatic cells occurs through direct extension, lymphatic or hematogenous dissemination and intraspinal seeding via the Batson plexus of veins. The tumors most commonly metastasizing to bone are carcinoma of the lung in the male and carcinoma of the breast in the female. Other malignancies metastasizing to the bone are carcinoma of prostate, thyroid, kidney and urinary bladder. The primary malignancy may either be known or unknown. In patients who have suspected metastasis of unknown origin, the most common primary malignancies are found in the lung or kidney. The presence of bone metastasis depicts a poor prognosis because it indicates a distant spread of the cancer. A skeletal metastasis are typically multifocal, but carcinoma of the kidney and thyroid may present with solitary lesions. Common sites affected are a spine, ribs, pelvis and long bones. Common symptoms are bone pain and pathological fracture. On plain x-ray, 20 to 25 percent of metastatic lesions are missed. Hence, in suspected cases, a bone scan should be performed. The metastatic lesions may be lytic, blastic or mixed. Majority of bone secondaries are osteolytic. But carcinoma of the prostate and breast are the commonest tumors to give rise to blastic or sclerotic bone secondaries. Kidney and thyroid cancer usually give rise to purely lytic secondaries. A sclerotic metastasis results from tumor cells secreting WNT proteins that stimulate osteoblastic bone formation. Metastatic lung cancer may give rise to mixed lesions, both lytic as well as blastic. It may have a cortex bite appearance. A bone secondary distal to the elbow or knees is most likely from a lung cancer. Investigation and workup consists of history and physical examination, focusing on breast, prostate, lung and kidneys. Basic laboratory tests including serum protein electrophoresis and prostate specific antigen. Radiograph of the entire involved bone and chest. A bone scan and CT scan of the chest, abdomen and pelvis. After the workup is complete, a guided biopsy can be performed. The microscopic appearance of metastatic lesion usually is similar to that of the primary lesion. Treatment consists of symptomatic pain relief, prevention of pathological fracture and control of secondaries by chemotherapy 
और इम्यूनोथेरेपी लोकलाइज रेडियोथेरेपी एंड बीस फॉस्फोनेट्स मोस्ट बोन मेटास्टेसिस आर रेडियो सेंसिटिव बट मेटास्टेसिस फ्रॉम किडनी कैंसर इज टिपिकली रेडियो रेसिस्टेंट रोल ऑफ सर्जरी इज लिमिटेड टू द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पैथोलॉजिकल फ्रैक्चर्स